Hello guys, I hope you're good. Uh, here we are on lecture number four. And the second part, we will be speaking about web, the web and the HTTP. So we spoke about the principle of the application network, our application of the network application where we have um, the different applications happening into the, 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 the very top part of the IP stack where we have our different ports and how they interact with the, with the whole stack of the network, right? From a user to another user in the network. Now, when you want to go to the web, you want to access a web page like uh, this particular web page and you want to access this particular resource, you have to write the, the, your request in, the, in that specific manner, right? Uh, it should be exactly like that. You have your hosting, which is basically your website, and then you have your object. And in this case, it's this GIF image, right? So it can be anything. It can be an MP3, it can be a picture, it can be a, a, word, a, a word document, Excel document, whatever. Now, a HTTP stands for hypertext, uh, hypertext transfer protocol. So it's basically there to exchange um, a text like a web page. It's a protocol for that. By nature, it is stateless. And then we'll speak about the state later on in the lecture. So when you use HTTP, then you have something we call the client, which is basically you requesting a web page from a server. So you're making a request to the server, right? And then uh, the server sends you the web page uh, whatever whatever you want so you basically get uh, you're making your request and then you're getting uh, your your web page right all right so that's basically that same for a particular phone which is also a user that makes the same thing to the server so the server remember from the previous lecture the client can have uh, random assign IPs, but then the server should have a permanent IP so that we can we can get to it, right? So the HTTP uses the TCP uh, transport on the transport layer, right? It needs to be a, a connection. It needs to be a connection oriented uh, discussion, right? It cannot be connectionless. There should be a discussion between the two. The port used in the HTTP is for uh, is eighty, although in HTTPS, uh, remember that it's four four three, right? So, be, when when you're doing your your HTTP connection at uh, uh, eighty, you have to remember that your connection might not be secure, right? And uh, remember when I talk, uh, when I spoke about stateless. So HTTP doesn't keep state of the data that uh, is being is being sent over. So it doesn't keep the, the user's data, right? So it's a um, it, it's a very it, it, it's it's a problem that we'll solve in the later slides of the of the of this video, right? So you can go you can go ahead and read about the states. Um, in a in a in a HTTP uh, context. So, in HTTP connections, we have two types of connections, and uh, they basically serve different purposes, right? We have a non-permanent HTTP type of connection and a permanent HTTP type of connection. So, in a non-permanent type of connection, basically HTTP like the TCP connection is open and then can send one object at the time over that particular connection and then it closes, right? So uh, that can be good if you have one or two pictures or something to pull over, but then it's not very good if you have multiple steps, otherwise you'll be having uh, multiple connection to open. A permanent HTTP connection basically says that you open the connection, the TCP connection that you would do for this one, but then you can send multiple objects within the same 
connection as it is permanent and it will be fine after you're done with your multiple send then the connection gets closed right so that's that's basically uh, the, the, the good part but then do not get confused both of them are basically used very nicely it's like sometimes you wouldn't want to have a permanent HTTP connection when you just want one object to be sent right sometimes you would want to have multiple objects to be sent at once all right so now with the non-permanent HTTP connection this is how the flow works we have uh, a website and then we have um, some uh, some resource we, are, we want to access from that website in this instance we want to go into this particular directory and then we want to get to the home index so what we do we make a request to the servers like uh, are you live yet yes and then the server accepts our connection right and then the basically the client makes a request right to the server and the server sends a response uh, to to the client with uh, our particular web page right as the time goes because this is the, the flow of the data so after that the server closes the connection and then we get one image right passing the issue find 10 reference to the JPEG object but then you need to do all of that for each and every object right for each and every object so you will go and get image number one and then do the whole transfer closes the connection image number two and do the whole transfer and closes the connection this is for a non-persistent http connection right okay now you saw that there were multiple uh, uh interaction between the client and the server and those multiple interaction between the client and the server uh, are called basically a round trip time right a round trip time rtt for sure is a time for a short package to travel from client to server and back to client right so basically you have from client to server back to client and then you have your 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 round trip time your rtt here you have your request file because here we we're basically interrogating the server just for just making that handshake right that handshake connection and after making the handshake connection then we'll be asking basically for the file then it goes to the server okay let me fetch your file and then it sends the file over and then it's done right that's basically it and for non per for non persistent http time then you have this time that you spend per object per object this is the file transmission time so if you have 10 files then you'll be having exactly that for each and every file 10 times now for a persistent http um basically for a, a persistent http you don't have to wait for that amount of time that we spent earlier so we don't need to have that we uh, don't also have the overhead on the TCP connection per object because everything comes as a whole right so what we do and the browser off often so we usually open uh, parallel connections right to get all of these objects if you want to get all of them at once and all of that it is disturbing it's like we don't want to do that so what we do instead of doing any of these three we say okay cool open the connection and leave it open and send the whole uh, in that same connection if I want 10 objects send me the 10 objects at, at once right so that's basically that leaving the connection open and then um, after everything is done then close the connection and our round trip time gets reduced literally by half because we don't have to do a request an acceptance that we don't have to do a handshake acceptance of the handshake the request acceptance of the request and the file being sent 10 times we don't need to do that 
we do it only once and back to the server we do it only once right then we're cutting the round trip time uh, by, by half okay we have two types of http messages we have our request like we saw earlier and then we have our response but then how is the request built up how how is the the comp a computer in the network speaks to another computer in the network like the client to the server so you might have seen this before uh like Unfortunately, I, I do not have my, uh, let me try Wireshark. So if I go to Wireshark, for instance, uh, my bad. So if I go to Wireshark, Wireshark would want to run in, a, in an admin mode. And um, after we are admin mode, then we'll be saying some devices here and after seeing the devices we can go to um let's go to the v ethernet to see if this one can produce anything uh yeah so we have some udp stuff okay all right so here um, for some reason, right. there's these are UDP connections, and uh, I don't know why I'm getting UDP connections, and uh, here, okay network bridge this is my WSL connection I used to have um, let's try WSL still UDP uh, still UDP connections okay let's try let's try uh, Google or let's try let's say pick and pay Let's see if Wireshark picks that one up and then we just want CCP um, I don't know what is wrong with um, my, my interfaces mm. Hmm. All right, I have a problem with my interfaces. I need to get the, the wireless one. Never mind. Um, but then what you need to know about this is the format of your, the format basically of your, um, of your request message. So you have a get. Or you, you have basically a method that your HTTP use it's a get method I want to get this HTML this HTML page right the host is that particular web 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 page and you have all these header lines and one of them is make the connection permanent or keep alive right you have to also remember the carriage return uh, character and the line feed character uh, basically the carriage return we call it like that and the light the line feed we call it LF so these are basically this is your HTML request message this is how you, you, you basically get that right and um, your request message general form is exactly like this you you have your your method right you have your method with this you, you can have different of them get post head update and then you have your url you have you, you see here you have your space your space 
carriage return and and line fit right and then you have your header name and then the value and still carriage return line fit and you have all that uh header header lines all those header lines that we mentioned earlier and then the entity body the entity body is usually used when you send a post request like uh, let's say you, you you're looking for um you say uh, i would like to get a particular item or like a particular image you're sending a post or for example yes when you're posting your username and password to the website then you say uh, username, you put a username, password, you put a password, means that you, you, you're posting some values to return a web page that is proper to you. So that's a, that's a post. Okay, as I was mentioning, a post uh, sends a particular set of data in the message, right? It includes a form input. A get basically returns a whole website and it's usually general to everyone it doesn't matter who is who and uh, on at this bottom here you have a post data because you have a url right and uh, you're trying to search because here you're trying to have a request that's the that that's the a page request minimum search and this one says with the different parameters monkeys and banana so right, basically those are those are your parameters that you're using. A head method uh, is basically a, a a return like a request that's just made from the header. It only has like the request header that only be returned if the specific URL was requested with a get method. That's also the head is literally the similar similar thing to a get right, and a put method. It's when you want to upload, like when you want to uh, push something up to a server, right? Uh, it's, it's like like Moodle, yes. So when you want to upload your assignment, then that particular the particular method you see into that page, it's a put method, right? All right. So now we're speaking about the response. The response is almost similar to the request, but then it has some more information. You have uh, your, your protocol, you have the day, the server, blah, blah, blah. You have a lot of information that you, you, you can basically use. But then the most important one is the code, the response code. Okay, you have a couple of codes that you need to be acquainted to. 200, this is your green light. It's like, if you have a 200 code, it means that you're very, very happy and uh, you have access to that particular page. 301, that's not so green. 400, that's bad. It's, like, it's, it's a bad one. 404, haha, the page is not found. And I'm sure most of you know about that. And uh, 505, that's a not so common one, just saying that the version is not supported. So, um, now for you to try, there are multiple protocols that you can go for. One of them is the telnet. You, you, you just go there. Uh, okay, you can replace this one by if it's uh, ac.za and you see what it will give you. And um, here, you, you have multiple ways of, of uh, accessing web pages. It's entirely up to you. You can say um, get some resource using a particular protocol and the host is this one right so I'll, I'll basically do that in a practical as well in a very practical way of doing that using python it will be very easy and uh, i'll show you how to do that and uh, you can use wireshark to capture all of that all right now let's go with this uh, let's go with what we call the cookies. Okay, so remember that HTTP is, is stateless. So HTTP doesn't keep information about a user. Let's assume that you're going to, um, let's say Facebook, and then you put your username and your password, right? Um, it means that if you close the page, 
your information is gone, right? But then because of cookies, then you will get back your information. Okay, let's go with this. Then, um, remember, this is your RTT, right? Round trip time. Uh, you're making your first request, your, 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 your some sort of ID is stored in the database, right? And after that, when you browsing the internet, then from your information you have, you basically updating your, your thing. For example, you're going to Facebook and then you log in there. You're storing some cookies. Now you're going to Google, for instance, that's a third party uh, to Facebook. It's like, okay, let me look for images of cats and dogs. And uh, to your particular record, you're updating everything here. It's like you're updating everything to your cookie and your cookie is having ID number one, right? And uh, now our uh, HTTP is not stateless anymore. It has some states to it. All right, you can keep some state. And after that, we commit our, uh, after that we commit the record we have about you in your computer. Committing means that we store that particular data in your computer. This is the information that the websites are using for you to make your life easier, right? But then what happens if the network connection or the client crashes at time t fine then you have a state here right you already have a state here that we can use later on to carry again because that's basically um what we have right so when you dealing with databases for those who are doing databases then you need to commit and store some information but then in this case you have some temporary data happening, then it will be it will be there. It will be already in your computer, and then the your your data will be and will be unlocked by itself because it was when you lock your data record, everything goes well, and if it crashes, then you will automatically unlock here and commit what is available right now, and that's fine. And then you still kept state of what was going on and then you can just start from wherever you uh, from wherever you left off and you continue all right so this is the last slide of part number two what you need to know about the cookies the cookies keep state of the http connection you're making with the with the website right so uh, again, I'd like to go to to a web page, an example. So here I'm using um, uh, Microsoft Edge, and by using Microsoft Edge, if you go to the, if you press F12, right? F12. That's I'm aligning this one. And remember the the TLS, right? For for the security transport layer, transport layer security this web page is secure remember all of this right it has some cookies as well and then i have multiple cookies that are allowed in here it's like i blocked the facebook and i like i allow this one right so uh, the pick and pay one i have a couple of cookies and one of these cookies it will be basically some sort of id and you see uh, like how these um, cookies are keeping track of what you do, especially the, the Google one. Okay, here it's very tiny, it's fine. Then we'll go this way. Uh, we'll go to uh, memory and um, we'll see how these things are, are, are doing. Um, okay, sources. And um, well, this is very different from, okay, you know what? I prefer Firefox. I'll go Firefox. And then we'll go, we'll go pick and pay. We have pick and pay. Here I have the cookies. And uh, here I have some particular IDs. And if I refresh the page, 
if I refresh the page, I have some IDs that are there, and you can see that there are some components that will expire in two years from now, or in 10 years from now, which means that my data will be available for 10 years or nine years uh, per se, or 11 years, sorry, that's just 11 years as long as I always log in with this particular computer, right? So um, this is basically the end of part number two. Hopefully you learned a bit about computer networking and how it's been, it's been used in the HTTP. Uh, see you in the next bit of the lecture number four. Bye.